you did your th your thing? Oh, I was expecting music and everything else on that. No. Okay. So we just had a sponsor roll up there. I was uh, expecting drum rolls from the Bugle Corps and everything else, but it didn't come up. Uh, and I would like to personally really thank uh, some people in particular for this whole session today, particularly Har Arrington Hardware, who has built all these sets and set this up for us. They do a fantastic job for us every year setting up, making it possible. If you ever watch Home and Garden Television, you know everything they do is impossible. Uh, because they get it all done so fast and uh, you know, they kind of, you don't see in the background the things that they do to make it all work. So we've set this up a little bit. We're talking today about decks and the steps that go up to decks and how do you build them so they last. Now yesterday was a great session. A lot of you were there with Chris going over all the details, the technical stuff, how it's built. Today we're going to get hands on and try to actually deal with some of the details that make them work and not work. Some things go wrong. So it's divided into uh, four different sections, and we're not doing a heck of a lot of work, so we're gonna, we did it on purpose this time. Instead of having you real busy putting on a whole bunch of deck boards or something that doesn't teach much of anything, we're gonna have to have you do the harder part, and at the same time, that's gonna help focus in on the things that need to be done. And as I look here, um, Chris, I think I'm noticing that we don't have the uh, in-cut. Chris, we don't have the in-cut treatment stuff, do we? You wanna get that all in here? In cut, I just want to mention about it. We're dealing with pressure treated wood. We don't have pressure treated wood. It was less expensive to build it this way. So I do as I say, not as I do. So you're going to build your decks with pressure treated wood. We're going to use all the right nails and stuff. We have indoor nails. We don't have galvanized nails. So we're cheating a little bit to make this work. One of the things that we want to cheat, but I want to make you work on, is in cut treatment. You know, every time you cut a board this pressure treated wood, you're supposed to put that crap on the end that smells so bad. By the way, they make a new one that doesn't smell bad anymore. That's really fun. You don't get driven out of your house just because you put in-cut treatment on it. And so you put the in-cut treatment every place you drill a hole, every place you cut a board. And that's one of the things we want to do today. We're going to have a little box with water, because this is a hotel. Look, at we can't make the rug all green. Okay, so water and a paintbrush. And your part of the judging is going to be, do you actually put the in-cut treatment when you cut a board? and make sure that it's all treated. So you just do a little water treatment on there. We need to drive that home because it's so easy to forget when you're actually building. And if you actually put the boards up, for instance, two boards that butt together, there's no way to get the in-cut treatment there if you don't do it before you put them together. And so you've got to do this stuff before. Because where's the only place you forget in-cut treatment? Between two boards. That's where it rots. <laughs> okay. The rest you could put all over. You could put all kinds of things on top of the deck. But you can't get it between the two boards. And that's where we need to get it when we're actually working. So all the ends, the blind ends, and things like that. And it really is important for the durability of a deck. So that's, that's one thing we really need to deal with. So he's hustling to get that all ready for you right now. Um, now, another thing, we're going to be using some hardware and, uh, that binds things together. And we have some regular nails that are not exactly the right nails for you to use. You're going to use those. Uh, but I've got a sample here, and I invite you to come take a close look at my sample. Any of this hardware, most of it they call them strong ties, is that there's pre-done holes, and you're supposed to fill every single hole with a nail because it's designed that way. That's what carries the weight. But another important detail, if you look at the, my little sample here, I've got two different size nails, and these are the right nails that are galvanized nails that go with it. If you use something that's not the same steel, one is there's a reaction between the two steels, which can cause rust. But the other thing is these nails are designed for the load that they're getting. They're actually designed for shear load. Whereas if you use a wonderful screw and drive it in, it actually can break easier than these nails because it's, it's too rigid. It's not made for a shear load. It's made for a pulling load, for tension. And so, the other thing you want is to get the right nail. You'll notice one of these is kind of sloppy in the hole. You got a picture of that? Yeah, you can, uh, there we are. So that's somewhat sloppy and moves around. This one barely moves in the hole and fills it. And that's the best way because it means that when you fill the hole, there's no sliding action to come down and bang into it. If you want to use screws, the only screws available, again, are made by the same company that make the brackets and they're made specifically to carry that kind of a load. So the screws actually have a hex head, and they're galvanized, and they're made out of the right steel, and they're made the right tension so that they carry the load. So when you're using this hardware, 
get the right stuff, and then that'll last longer than the rest of the deck. What you don't want is this piece to let go <laughs> early in the game. Then you're in trouble, okay? <clears throat> so we're gonna be looking a little bit about that hardware. The very first challenge is going to be just making one stair stringer and putting it in place. That's all, you got 20 minutes to do that. But it's the most intellectual of the whole day, okay? Because you've gotta make this notch here. As a matter of fact, uh, where do we have, Chris, do you have one of those extra ones that are not attached to any place? The cutout stringer? The riser or the stringer? The, the riser, uh, no, the stringer. That, that's all, oh, you got one. If you're used to making steps at all, you see this is kind of a weird little step because it's got this notch in it here. And the only reason I put the notch in, and you wouldn't do just one notch, you'd either have notches or don't have notches. I wanna show you something about the strength of steps. There's it's not the right one, that's a deck board. There we go. So if we put a tread on like this, and you go to walking on, now this is really a pretty close arrangement, it's pretty strong the way it is. But you can imagine if you go out to the limit as to how far you can spread, you can get a little movement on this one at some point. Well, a way to reach for your steps is to put a riser in because the riser gives it more strength. When you come across on the top, let's put this around with a better edge on here. Let's turn this over. Got you see how this sits on here and gives you a lot more strength in terms of walking up and down. Now, what I like in snow country is I'll put a riser on that's not full height. And the reason I do that is I can kick the snow out down here. Otherwise, you get the snow accumulating in there and it packs in and it's harder to shovel out and it's harder to get a full footing here because that's full of snow. By leaving, using just a two by four instead of a full riser, you get a lot of strength, but you still clear your snow easily. And that, for me, makes a much sturdier snow country step than having a full riser or no riser at all. So we just wanted to show that to you. The one on the bottom won't have that, and the one at the top won't have that, but just to show you some alternatives in how this kind of stuff goes together. That's why in our stair stringer, we'll first of all design this thing with full notches, and then come back and cut out this little two by four piece. So it goes in like that. Now you've actually got sample pieces there that are gonna be used later in the day for the two on the sides. Don't trace them, okay? You're gonna to have to draw it on your board without tracing it. So the judges are watching, so you're being checked. So you start out with this nice big board like this. And what you've gotta do is lay out those notches. And for a lot of people, that's something pretty complicated. Basically what we're doing is running across here eight and a half inches. Well, no, that's not the right dimension. Here it is, 10 inches. 10 inches out, and then we're coming up at seven and a half up. So somehow you want this thing to go 10 inches and seven and a half, okay? And that's what confuses a lot of people. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use a tool called the carpenter square. Okay, you got two of them. You get a choice between steel or aluminum, so you can play around with that. So technically, you just find your 10 inches and your seven and a half inches here, and you can start to see that would lay out like that as you're gonna lay the thing out. And if you use that same 10 and seven and a half, it'll even give you the vertical for up here. As you're coming along for cutting off the part that has to go straight up and down, it's almost like another riser, okay? And the part that goes across here is almost just like another rung. So it's still that 10 and seven and a half. There are many ways to do that. Here's the official way, so that you get it really going, is that you take this little thing. You got a good shot? Okay. So you see this little brass, it looks like a nut, and there's a screw in the middle. Let me just unscrew this for a minute. I'll put it out here at 10 inches and lock it on. And then you can come up here at seven and a half and lock it on. Now, if you've never used these before, they're really kind of cool once you get them set up properly so that I can just bump them in like this 
and it gives me what I need. Okay? Now, if you've ever tried this, ask Chris, he'll tell you it doesn't work. <laughs> because you, to get it in exactly the right place is kind of complicated. So what I do is I use, without this for the first moment, I'll just move them out of the way. Take your pencil and simply find very carefully your seven and a half and your 10. So it's going to work like that. And then you draw your first piece. Now you've got to figure out where it goes better than this. But when you draw the first one, I guess if I got my lead so it was sticking out better, it would work better, wouldn't it? So you draw the first one. Now what I do is I hold that into place and move these little spacers up till they touch. And they're not really on 10 or seven and a half, but they're on, they're very close, but they're what it now takes to make that good, nice line. Okay, it's just a trick to be able to use these things properly to do it. The other thing Chris tells me does, he takes a board and he clamps it on across this way. And then it's easier to slide with the board. So there's always little tricks to make this work. But that's basically the carpentry square. This is one of the most useful tools in the whole site. Those of you who do a lot of woodworking know. You can do everything with it. There's calculation tables. There's all kinds of stuff on here. In fact, there's a whole book on the carpenter's square if you want to that just tells you how to use the carpenter's square. So what you're going to need to do is kind of figure out how do I going to get this thing out of that. So that's what you want to cut out here is something like that. So anyway, it's going to come down like this. You're going to need to lay it out so that that 10 seven and a half fit up like that and run along. Now this one here actually is bigger and then you cut out the square as you're coming down. So if you'll notice that there's points on both ends, but again, they're all on the same angles, up and down angles. So you just keep copying that angle all over the place as you're coming through. Even for this side, if you come over here and play with this, it's going to be, it's not that one, it's the other one. It's gonna come up like this and that would give me that angle there. Okay, so that's going to be a lot of your work is figuring out how to lay that out. Now you've got the pieces to compare to, but I don't want you just tracing it. You got to actually make this first piece and make that work. And then we want to install it. So once you've got this piece and you're going to come to install it, if you just toenail it in up here, that's not a lot of strength. That's why we have these special brackets like this that are made to Actually, have I got the right end here? Yeah. So this bracket is made to fit in like that without all those nails in the way for the moment. And then nail in. You need to do this. You could put this last nail in later. So you could establish it. Some people like to attach this to the stringer first and then go over to the wall with the whole thing. Other people will come over to the wall and set it up and then come in. So either way that you want to work that out. But then you grab it, you bend this just a little bit till it fits the right angle, and that's what's gonna really hold. Again, nails in all of these holes all the way around. On the bottom, you need something that just ties everything together. So a pressure tree, a piece of wood down there, and it may be sitting on concrete block if you got concrete where you live. And then you can just toenail in the bottom. The treads and everything's gonna hold that pretty well together. Just toenail into that base piece, brings it out. So, when you're done with your contest, you're going to have one stringer down the middle with that board across the bottom and everything's attached and cut nice. Okay, is that simple enough and clear enough for what we want to try to do in this first one? But you can always come up and take a look at mine and see how that's set up to uh, figure that out. And uh, work on that layout, work on the pencil. Oh, one thing I'll mention to you is that the uh, pencils, we use flat carpenter's pencils, right? And so normally we take a knife and we sharpen them all up. We didn't bother to give you knives, so we'll keep them sharp for you. But uh, the thing about these pencils is they sell little sharpeners that go around and sharpen them. If you ever tried it, you know it doesn't work because the lead sticks out too far and it breaks. It's a real soft lead and it needs all the support. This is the only sharpener that works other than a knife, which works fine, because it has four blades on it and it allows me to sharpen it this way and then to lay it down and sharpen it this way. Oh, isn't that sexy? Okay. We'll have to get Aaron Hardware to buy these things. But uh, it's, it's the only one that's actually made for flat pencils. See, why do we have flat pencils? They don't roll away, but they're very soft lead, 
and we need a fairly fat line. This isn't f a fine carpenter's work or fine furniture making work. And so that soft lead needs a lot of support. And that's why when you sharpen them properly, it doesn't break as easily. It still breaks, but not as easily. But this is, you'll, I'll leave this up here. Don't steal it. Just come up and sharpen your pencil with it. And uh, that'll keep your pencils going. Um, I think that's really basically all we do. How are we doing on uh, getting this in cut stuff? So, oh, we got water and everything here. So, by the way, when you see, once you get this thing all cut, this is all a cut surface. So you're going to have to come through, and the judge is going to be looking for that water. Everything you cut, any holes you drill, we got to make sure it's got in cut treatment on it, okay? That, that's an important part of deck building, not to be minimized. Okay. So, there's, uh, I think that's what we need. This belongs to this set here. Don't want to steal it. And uh, you're not going to be drilling today on this one, no, because you're hammering. You're putting them in. You have bags full of nails. Okay, where's our contestants for today? Everybody who's in this, in this contest. Get up two by two teams. There's five stations. Choose your team meet. Now, the first thing you probably want to do is identify there's two big pieces of wood that aren't cut. One is the one that goes on the floor, and the other one is the stringer. Don't mix them up. <laughs> Which is the longest one, Chris? Uh, one says stringer, and the other one, OK, it says stringer. OK, so the stringer is the one that we got to cut the notches out of. We got two more teams missing here. Now, there's one team coming. Our last team over here. Are we, are we missing a team? <laughs> Silvio, we got somebody there? <laughs> He's missing his partner. We need, we need somebody to partner with him. Come on, somebody join him. You going to make him work alone? <laughs> okay, if you found your boards, that's right. Get your hats, get your gloves. Uh, Chris. Yeah, glasses. Yeah. Now, for cutting, what we've got are jigsaws and hand saws. So you can choose what you want or do both. Okay? And we'd like to, uh, while we're thanking our sponsors, we'd like to thank Stanley Black and Decker for a whole bunch of really cool tools, which, of course, are going to all be given away at the end of the uh, show, what, at the banquet, I imagine. So some of you guys are going to be walking home with some impact drivers and some jigsaws, so you'll like that. Uh, am I right, Chris, at the end of the demo, they, they keep their gloves and their hard hats? Okay, at the end of the demo, you keep your gloves and your hard hats, okay? And the winner of the demo actually gets some other prize. I don't know what it is. But uh, we do thank uh, Black & Decker for all these great battery-operated tools. Do you all have jigsaws? You uh, hammers, handsaw? and you found your two boards. Now you'll notice you can cheat a little bit because you do have a cut stringer in your pile of wood that you can look at, but you can't trace it. So you gotta go from there and figure out how to draw it out on the board. So you might wanna find your stringer board there. And did you find your little um, guides for the carpenter square so you're not wasting time later looking for them? Because once we get going, you got 20 minutes to do it all. So you got these little guides for your uh, carpenter square? They're called stair guides. Okay. Our last team's going to be set up over there. You guys are all ready. You got your carpenter square. You got your guides. You got your stuff figured out where it is. Your hammers. Got a hammer in the bag there. And uh, your nails and are in here. You've got two different carpenter squares, aluminum and steel. I don't know why they sent us two, but they were generous. More things to give away at the end of the show. And you all got a pencil, because you're going to need a pencil to draw with. You don't have a pencil. I probably stole your pencil. Here you go. If you're missing anything over on this set, it's me that stole it. So. Oh, you got a pencil in there? Yeah. Oh, good stuff. And you probably have little guides down there, too. 
and your jigsaw's ready to go. And you got the proper board for the stringer, and the other one goes in the bottom. Okay. Now you're, um, you've all got the uh, impact wrenches, so if there's something you want to screw instead of uh, nailing, like uh, the toe nailing on the bottom down here, you could do that with uh, the screw gun if you want. There's screws there. You like that? Not really. Not really? You'd rather have your knife? I'd rather have my knife. <laughs> nice idea. Nice idea, but he's not sold. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's just do a check here. Out on the end, are you ready to go? You're ready to go out there? She raises her hands like this. Okay, that sounds like I'm really ready to go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, she's got a pro with her. She's, got, she's, she's ready to rock and roll. You are ready. You guys here are ready. Okay. You're all set? You're all set here. You figured out which board you got? You might want to move some of that stuff out of your way to be able to set your string in. Huh? So I just move that off to the side because you're going to have to put your step out that direction. Yeah, most of these boards in front of you are in your way. Move them out to the edge so that... Uh... That's coordinated teamwork. <laughs> And now, for the height and everything, it doesn't work unless you put your base piece down. So that big one that's going to, see this piece here on the bottom? Because if it's not underneath, it doesn't, nothing fits. There you go. That's the base piece. So you need that down for everything to fit. Okay. You want to move your wood out of the way over there? Just shove that wood off, get it out of your way, because you're going to have your stringer coming right down there. Just to give you all a good chance. Okay, so you got to really figure out how to do this drawing, and the judge is going to make sure you don't trace. So you got to learn to do that. When you cut it, don't forget your end cut, and then you've got to use nails and nail in every hole of the fastener. It has to be totally attached. Okay? Are you all ready? Anybody not ready? Anybody need some time? You got your goggles, you got your glasses, you got all that stuff? I might as well join you with the hard hat. Looks good on camera. <laughs> okay, and everybody's got their little bucket of water with their in-cut treatment. Don't forget that. I think we're just about ready to, are we ready to go, Chris? No, Chris is filling up water buckets. He never thought he'd have a job as a water boy. Okay, all right, don't get started yet over there. Don't cheat yet. Here we go, are we ready in the console back there? Are you ready? Okay, we got a clock up here. There's the clock, it says 20 minutes. Okay, so you got 20 minutes to make this happen. Five, four, three, Two, one, go. Your run is, what is it, 10 and a quarter, Chris? The run is 10 and a quarter? What are we doing, Chris? Is that 10 and a quarter, 7 and a quarter on that or what? So if I go here, I got seven, what do we got? Seven and a half, okay, seven and a half, and the other one is 10, do I, I got 10 and a quarter here, do I? Yeah, 10 and a quarter, seven and a half, 10 and a quarter, seven and a half, 10 and a quarter, seven and a half. Ten and a quarter, seven and a half, everybody. Well, they seem to be going rock and roll over there. 
Now, after you've made your sketch on there, I suggest you take out your tape measure and check if you actually have 10 and a quarter, seven and a half. Does that actually measure 10 and a quarter, seven and a half when you measure the line? Check that out just to see that you're adjusted before you get too far. Ten and a quarter, seven and a half. Oh, we're getting lots of lines on that board. <laughs> take your time. Take your time and get that right. Now, the very first thing to do is check. Do you really have 10 and a quarter, seven and a half here? So you got seven. That looking good. And we got 10. Oh, that's looking good. Huh? Yeah, that's, I figured that one. Now, the one of them, and you take a look at mine, you can figure it out. Well, first of all, you should mark your ends before you start cutting. Mark your ends as well. You see one's going up, over, so there's all kinds of other little angles to put in there. So again, take a look at that. So just imagine setting this thing up like the one that's up there. So if it's setting up like that, Okay, then what are we going to do? Right here, you're going to have to go straight down. straight down. And you might not have enough meat there, huh? No. You might have to shift it all over. Okay, you got them lined up there? Now, do you have. Ten, well, it's close. Okay, a quarter. Seven and a half. Now, do you have, as, if you take a look at, like on mine, yeah, this one, as you're coming along there, this is run. This has to go right down to the floor, right? Yep. Okay. Now, there is a little cheat here, is that usually, if you check here, you can see what happens. Uh, by doing this one way or the other, it will come to the same angle, which means I can cheat over there, you see? So, you could actually, in terms of just lining it up, getting that to work, where, where are you coming in? Is coming in like this? Yeah. This way. It's always confusing. Okay, so at least, well, that run out is a pain in the butt for you there. You got it. Well, I'm not sure that's right yet. But do, do a mark up here. No, do the mark more up here. Mark that part, because I can get it better down here. You see, if I look at this, come along here, that's my right angle. So we bring that over and we can see where it's going to go and take it all the way. No, no, up here. Follow your line on down. See, all I did is I lined this up with this yep. to see what the angle was. Yeah, now this is a real hard thing. So what you want to do, set this up so it's about right and just strike it down about two inches. Now, if you flip over here, you'll find out that you can get that same angle right there. You see the angle yeah. that's here? So now I can bring this over and catch that line. You have to play with it just a little bit. No, no, it's not that one. It's oh. this one you want, right? This one? So you want to continue from here down. See, is that going to make straight across? No. Yeah, that's pretty. Actually, there, there's your nice parallel lines. You want to draw that straight on down. That, that's okay. exactly where it is. Follow that? Now, there's a couple other cuts missing. If you take a look at this, you'll see it. What have you got there? Then you managed to do... You got that? No, we're over here. No, that's not All right. right. Okay. Wait a minute. There we go. So this is what you got. You see, so you're actually missing this piece. You could actually just measure this distance down. You can't, can't trace, but you can measure and draw. <laughs> can't trace, but you can measure and draw. And then, uh, yeah, measure and draw. And then you see the other one, it's not up there, it's down here. Yeah. Okay? So just measure and then draw. Don't copy. Once you get one made, then you can copy.
So in real life, do you use NCAT all the time? Pardon? In real life, do you use NCAT all the time? Yeah, I use it on some, some cuts. Some cuts? Yeah. Oh, cuts. Not all my cuts. <laughs> yes, all your cuts. I got cuts. something that horizontal, if I got something over oh, yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chance of getting underneath there. Yeah. Running out of gas there. Pull the trigger farther. Pull the trigger all the way. Is that? There you oh. go. Just pull the trigger all the way. Do you know we've read enough three cut ones just in case? Eh? I okay. saw that. <laughs> Now that's the way we did ours too, and there's actually an error there, but we'll live with it. Well, it's gonna have to it come should down come like down that, like right? that, which means that should be higher, but yeah, go ahead yeah. and leave it up like that, and then like bend that? this guy up, yeah. and yeah. then just bend that up, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should have been up higher, but then yeah, you're, yeah. you're losing kneeling on the top. Yeah. yeah. There's a slight error even in mine. That bracket should be higher so that it nestles in, but they're all going to do it wrong. <laughs> it's because it's not, we actually should make sure the step was there so we could actually get nail into the step. <laughs> Should have fumbled the uh, put the first step in flush so we could go nail into it. So lift the bracket. Yeah, the hanger goes down, the bottom of that thing doesn't line up. No, but if you lifted it then you would line up.
Okay, we're doing pretty good. Everybody's pretty close to getting cut out. These guys are uh, walking away with it, but. You gotta screw all this on too here, John? Uh, they didn't lay it out really properly for that. So, I mean, then you're gonna have a big gap yeah, there. Yeah. So you might as well just leave that up there. No, we'll just leave it be. Uh, toenail down there in the center of your board down down at the bottom. Toenail, toenail, this yeah, this is this is your support, look. So just find your center. Okay, now as you're getting ready to do the brackets, you notice it doesn't quite fit right, so just follow the example on the stage of that one. Just put the bracket right at flush at the top like that. Yeah, just line up the bracket flush there. You, need, you do need to be in the center of the stairs. Are you in the center of the stairs this way? Yeah, you got a center point. You could just take the bracket and put it up there all alone and hammer it and then bring that in later. And just put it right flush to the top. There's a... There's a slight error in nestling into it, but uh, we're going to do it like that for now. together during assembly than long-term strength here. And by the way, we don't want it really screwed into the concrete floor forever. <laughs> you don't need to tap on it into the floor. <laughs> uh, well, is your in-cut treatment on? Yeah, yeah, okay. You did it. You did it. And That's right. Now slide that right up flush to the top. Now the bracket doesn't quite fit, doesn't nestle the way I'd like it to, but for now we're gonna go up like that. Now you need that board for it to fit, yeah. And then bend this bottom piece up to grab it after you nail the top one in. That's right, just put it in the center and bring it right up flush here. Good. And you're gonna need the board down on the floor for it to fit right. See, it doesn't fit right until you get the board on the floor. Your, your baseboard, it's over here, I think. So now you want to get that right in the center, mark your center in here, and then bring this right up flush like that, and, uh, and put it in. You can put it in first and put the put the stringer in afterwards. Yeah, just mark it in the center. Got your bracket there someplace? Oh, it's right there. You can just do it without the bracket now. Just bring the bracket right up flush to this at that center point. Yeah. yeah, that's the easiest way to go. Okay, everybody's nail on brackets got four and a half minutes left. Not bad. Don't forget your end cut treatment. Particularly in hidden areas that you can't get to later. left. You're doing good. Two done and all five almost coming.
And if you bend a nail, you can't blame it on the wind. There is no wind. Two and a half minutes left. You're getting right to the, all of you are going to come up here. That's working. Toenail to the one in the center of the board down on the floor. Here's a little trick when you want to help them hammering. You hold the board on the other side. Oh. And then it doesn't. You try to do it with your knee and it hurts your knee. Oh. <laughs> and you got two more nails up here. You got this guy. You guys are all done. Good show. Two minutes left. Now you gotta go fast as if it's lunchtime after this, right? That's when it speeds up. If uh, you want to, you grab one of those other ones and sister it and see how close they are. You got one minute. Get those last toenails in there. You're all down on the toenails, just on one screw. The toenail on this thing doesn't really hold it in a lot. What it does is it holds it together for the assembly, so things are in the right place. All right, these three are done. We got 30 seconds. 30 seconds to get that toenail in there, gentlemen. <laughs> I hear toenails all over. Seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, it's over. <laughs> okay, now it's the judges to go in and take a look at it. You thought that was gonna be easier than that, didn't you? <laughs> That's the problem with the stringer. You got that first one, getting it laid out, getting it measured. That's the hardest part of it all. And once you get one that really works, you don't cut two or three, you cut one until it really works. So you can adjust it. Because they gotta all be the same, which allows you then to really, then you can just use it as a model to cut the other ones. Otherwise your stairs go like this. <laughs> now later on, as we move along, the next challenge is actually going to be uh, installing the outside stringers, which we've done some special reinforcement on them, and um, putting in the treads and the risers. So we'll be finishing up the steps. After that, we're gonna deal with balustrades and rails and the stuff on the top. So we kind of skip the deck itself.
We have a winner. We have a winner. We have num team number five, which is over in the team corner. Team number there. five in the corner. And they're from Garden River. From Garden River. The winners, come on up. You have some? Congratulations. Thanks. I'm, I'm glad that you were a good assistant to her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to help her out on that. Do we have something for the winners? Oh, they went to get it. Okay, well, we have a prize, so don't get lost. And we'll give you a prize as soon as we dig it up here. But uh, thank you very much. It was great, all of you. Good, good competition. Thank you. Don't go away. We'll be back with a prize. So let's see. What's our time frame here? We're supposed to be already starting the second one or not? <laughs> And the winner is Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't build that. <laughs> Smoking.